Hey, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be taking you through the second question on complex paper number two from Queensland's general maths exam in 2020. So let's have a quick look at the question. This was worth five marks. The number of people living in a household and the average daily household water use measured in litres was recorded for 10 households. So we've got a table here with some data. And the question asks us to calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient and then evaluate the appropriateness of using this coefficient for the association between daily water usage and the number of people living in a household. So straight away we know because we're asked to calculate our Pearson's correlation coefficient that this is a bivariate data analysis question. So we're going to be having our heads in unit three. And something very important to note about this question is that half a page of graph paper was provided. Now, when we looked at question one a few videos back, question one asked students to develop a model and it didn't provide any graph paper. A lot of students decided to go and draw a graph instead and it wasn't overly helpful for their solution. In this case, the fact that the QCAA has provided graph paper really gives you the big hint you need to draw a scatter plot. So that would be my very first starting point and also calculating R using the calculator. So let's jump on now and calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient using a Casio calculator. Okay, here we are with our calculator. Now, we need to get it set up so that it's ready to take on some bivariate data. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on my mode and choose number two for statistics. And then I'm going to tell it A plus BX, option two, which tells it I'm going to be working out the equation of the line. Now, I need to be able to do this in order to calculate R on my calculator. So let's put all the data in for our X values. That's the number of people in the household. We would assume that's going to be our, um, our independent variable or our explanatory variable because the number of people would tend to drive up the amount of water that you use. So it's important that you recognize uh, which is the independent variable first. Okay, so let's pop in the number six and then we'll just go all the way down, four, five, four. Hope you're working along with me on your Casio as well or your TI calculator. And we just wanna count those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I seem to be missing a data point here, so I've done something wrong. Let's check our work. Six, two, four, five, five was with the missing number. Four, three, one, six, seven. Okay, back up to our dependent variables now. And we're going to have 990. That's why it's always good to check your work. 160, 320, 480, 410, 280, 240, 130, 940 and 1340. So now I've got all of my data in my calculator and I can press the all clear button now, it's going to be sitting in the background. Now I'm going to be using the statistics function over here, which I access by pressing the shift button and I press number one and I'm looking for this menu five for reg and I'm gonna go straight to calculating R by pressing three and R's value is 0.8. Eight, six. So if this was a scatter plot that I was going to draw, I'd be looking for very strong correlation here. Okay, so our first mark on this exam was awarded for stating R uh, is equal to 0 0.886. We were asked to calculate that. And you didn't need to do that using your formula sheet. You could jump straight onto the calculator for that. It was only awarded a single mark. So using the calculator was perfectly fine. Okay, also stating that what this represents, it represents a strong positive correlation. Um, so that's something important to note as well. That's part of your comment and your evaluation that it's strong positive correlation. However, strength is not just enough to know on its own. Remember, whenever you're describing correlation, you need to talk about the form, the strength, and the direction. So we've got the, the strength, which is the strong, and we've got the direction, which is positive, but we don't know yet, is it a linear equation or a nonlinear equation? Now, something very important to note is that Pearson's correlation coefficient is only used for linear data. And we don't know yet if this is a linear relationship. So we need to work that out. Now, there's a few ways of doing this. Firstly, we could work out it's linear by 
finding the equation a and b putting it together as an equation then counting the residuals calculating all of those which will take a very long time and then drawing a residual plot and some people might think that's what the graph paper is for draw a residual plot that would definitely be a valid method however it takes a very long time there is a quicker way to do it you'll notice the questions only awarded five marks it's not awarded a great deal of marks so I would expect a lot of marks for doing residual plots and there's not a lot of marks here so let's look at the alternative way we could actually just sketch it and see if there's a clear trend now sometimes you don't know after you've sketched it and then you would need to go and do the residual plots and work the residuals out so let's take the shortcut and just draw the scatter plot to start with and see if we can inspect it by eye so I've done this on the computer but you would have to actually manually draw this scatter plot on graph paper and it's very clear from looking at the scatter plot that it is not a linear relationship at all in fact it forms a non-linear relationship almost like a parabola style shape so we can see that as the number of people in the household gets bigger and bigger and bigger then it starts to increase that water usage quite rapidly I'm not sure why that would actually be perhaps you might like to tell me in the comments but we're not asked to interpret why we're just asked to evaluate is Pearson's correlation coefficient appropriate for discussing the particular relationship between water usage and the answer is obviously no even though it was a high amount 0.886 a high correlation it's not actually appropriate for using as a linear model because it's not a linear model so we get a mark here our third mark out of five was for drawing the scatter plot and doing the right thing on our paper there and knowing that it's not linear so then making a statement that it is not appropriate and should not be used so that would be our fourth mark and then the reason why is because the model in the scatter plot is non-linear and that was our fifth mark out of five so even though this is on the complex paper not super difficult really the main skills was knowing how to use your calculator knowing how to draw the scatter plot knowing how to interpret both of those numbers the real thinking here though was recognizing that Pearson's correlation coefficient R is only appropriate for linear models and that's where a lot of students would have lost the marks because they would not have recognized that well that is all we have time for today thank you so much for joining me do stay tuned we are going to be having more of these videos in the future I'm going to be interspersing them in between other videos in particular series I'd like to say a big welcome to our subscribers thank you for joining us here at the channel please do hit that notifications button and like and follow us on McClatchy Mass on Instagram and Facebook that is the place to be lots of updates and fresh ideas and competitions tips tricks etc coming up to you there once again thank you so much again you can definitely email me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com i am very responsive and i get back to people usually within 24 hours and if you need to send me a private message on messenger from facebook or on instagram i'll also get back to you there thank you again for joining me i'm natalie mcclutchy you've been watching mcclutchy mass and have a wonderful day